they're doing all right. You know, uh, uh, Christian had an MRI. You know, it turned out, uh, you know, there's nothing serious uh, there. So, uh, you know, just uh, today we wanted to go easy with him. Uh, we think he should be full on in again on Thursday. Uh, tomorrow we just wanted to build up today and tomorrow a little bit, and he should be full in on Thursday as well. So is the expectation both would be ready potentially this weekend? Yes. Yeah. Leo have a ice pack on him? Yeah, he just jumped and he landed uh, landed a bit. Again, he his knee looks fine. It's like one of those, uh, I don't know, our trainer called it a housemaid's knee. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so he's got a bump on his knee that he needed ice on. Estrada looked like he was in full today. Yeah, he was training full, so we'll we'll see how this week goes for him. You know, full training today and, you know, tomorrow's uh, obviously an off day. Uh, just an optional for some of the guys. And then uh, Thursday, we'll see how he looks on Thursday. So You're then. going to Portland without Roger? Yeah, uh, you know, we're trying to figure out if we can bring him down somehow. We're going to either, I don't know, if we can't bring him, we, we've got, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe we've got to do a cardboard cutout or do something or paint his face on the side of the bus. or oh, We've got to do something to bring Roger with us. At least fun? his spirit will be with us. How much fun is this rivalry, though? Uh, rivalries are always fun, you know, it's always fun and, uh, you know, I think it's good for the sport. It's good for the sport in this country, it's good for the sport in, uh, in the Northwest and, uh, you know, I think these are games that as uh, the soccer, you know, country, or the soccer fans in our country become aware of uh, and as they have become more aware of the rivalry, you know, it's something that they want to tune in and watch because they know the games are, are full of, uh, you know, pageantry and atmosphere and, you know, from, uh, from what's uh, happening in the stands to what's happening on the field. So from that standpoint, I mean, it's a good ad advertisement for the sport. With uh, the roster freeze coming up, do you have anything particularly on your to-do list? To, to we're, we're, looking at, <laughs> we're looking at a bunch of things. So, uh, you know, right now, you know, we'll see what happens. Sometimes those things happen for you. Sometimes they don't, you know, so we'll, we'll know by Friday. Do you guys know if you'll participate in a Marcus Tracy lottery? Uh, I haven't made a decision on that yet. There's still some time to go. Uh, you know, Marcus was a very talented player when he came out of Wake Forest and, you know, has not had a lot of success overseas. But that's uh, sometimes that's the way it works, you know, but he's also had some injury issues. So. We gotta, you know, do our do our due diligence, and uh, and then we'll see. I'm sure all the other teams are doing the same. How high could he have gone that year if he was going to come to MLS? Uh, he would have probably been a first round pick. He would have probably gone in the first five, I think. Yeah. Coach, can you talk about the connection with Freddie and Eddie and up front and why that has been you know, a little more successful lately than it has earlier in the year? Uh, just because they've had time together. You know, they've had time together and uh, time for our team. Uh, to also uh, understand how they work off of each other and how they can play. So I think Eddie is a player who can stretch the opponent's defense. I think Freddie Montero has filled different roles for us at different times this season, playing as a lone striker. He stretched the defense as well. He's dropped underneath. Uh, I think he's really, uh, when you look at his game, he's added a great deal of, uh, of versatility to his game. And, uh, you know, as a result, you know, as they get to understand each other and our players understood them better, uh, you know, they've become a very dangerous combo. And I think what happens is if an opponent concentrates on one, then the other one gets some space and gets to do his thing. And when the opponent concentrates on the other one, uh, then all of a sudden it, it works the other way. So Chivas concentrated on Eddie Johnson down in L.A. and, and Montero at three. And they concentrated on Montero up here. And then all of a sudden Eddie had two. So, uh, you know, it's it's good to have two players like that because uh, it just means you got to it, it allows you to then spread the other team's defense. You've said that it, you take some particular pride in games where Freddie and Eddie both score. Do you take another level of pride when one of them sending the other up for goals? Well, that combination was excellent. I mean, it's the, <clears throat> you know, I mean, there were so many good things in that play. There was the explosion of Freddie uh, to get beyond Shalry. There was a the quality of the cross, you know, off his left foot, which is not considered to be a strong foot for sure. Uh, off his left foot, you know, his right place. When you watch Eddie's run, he just dipped like he was going to go near post just to get the defender to bite and then floated back. So it was a really good run inside, you know, and then it was just a solid header. So, I mean, I mean there were a lot of good things in that goal. Does this game uh, mean more because it's on national broadcast television than 
Yeah, we, we try not to worry about it that way. Uh, the game means a lot for us because, you know, because the Cascadia Cup is important to us. And also, you know, right now we're six points behind San Jose and we want to put ourselves in a position that if they slip that we can, uh, we can close that gap. So, so it's important for us from the points and, and because of, uh, of the Cascadia Cup. Was Portland away earlier this year a low point in the season? It was definitely not something we were happy about. You know, I didn't think we played uh, particularly well. Uh, you know, we gave up some goals that we thought we could have done much better with. Uh, and, um, you know, we probably lost our composure a little bit towards the end of the game as well. Uh, you know, but those are all things that, you know, we've come through, you know, it's a lot, given us a chance to improve upon it and grow. And I think we've become better. You said the team was at a crossroads in the post game team has gone 6-1 in 4 cents? Yeah, I, I guess, I don't know, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's like, you know, I mean, uh, it's tough for me sometimes to transport myself back and know exactly how I feel. I mean, I, I'm very... I'm a very emotional person, and a lot of times I'll I'll tell you, you know, how I feel at that particular moment. And that's obviously how I felt, and I, it's the way I've always coached. You know, is is I think the players have to believe you, and uh, you know, so you've got to show them, you know, how you feel and, and what your emotions are. If you're if you're hiding your emotions too much, then they're going to distrust you. And uh, you know, so obviously, uh, you know, that was expressed to the players at that point that we weren't happy. Uh, about that performance and that things needed to change and obviously the guys responded and have responded very well. Brad mentioned that that was the first time that he could remember being pulled at halftime. It seems like he's been playing particularly well since then. I mean, is it, do you feel like he got a particular message or was there a message you were trying to send? I obviously, I, I didn't think he had played really well in that first half and, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, you know, that's sometimes going to happen and, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, players... Uh, you know, obviously quality guys respond to situations like that because they have a lot of pride and, uh, and they've got quality to go with that pride. So they're able to go out there and say, well, wait a second, I'm better than that. And obviously that's what he's done since then. So, uh, you know, but it's, you know, it's, I mean, it's happened at various stages in careers to most everybody probably. They asked me to do an ad and I thought, cool. They want me because I play for the Seattle Sounders. Then I find out it's because my wife told them I'm a good dad, even better. For me, being a good father is much more important than soccer. So here's my message. Be a good parent. Stay involved with your kid's life. Do something with them, anything. Take a walk, read a book, maybe go see a Sounders game. We can make it better for our kids by staying involved and showing that we love them.